Hello, and welcome back to Clam Man 2. Um, last episode, we added two jokes to our repertoire, had a talk with uh, Nehi, I believe it was, and we moved a truck as well. So now we're going to pop into the Sankey Mart before heading to our apartment. Right, so, gumball machine. You remember the feelings of biting down on a gumball as a child, wondering if it would crack before your teeth did. Isn't that Jawbreakers? No, apparently this guy just has weak teeth. Who is this? Yes, there is someone in the fridge. Fridge. Window's pretty frosted. It's hard to see inside. Uh, there's nothing in this fridge. I know this for a fact. Uh, there's nothing in the fridge. It won't stop me opening it. You are so right. So, so right. You should share this information with people in the general vicinity. Yes, I will. I am so right. So right. See you, clam man. I can't still open it, though, yeah? I haven't just, like... Yeah, okay, cool. Locked. Either frozen... Or either way, it's not budging... That right. How convenient. Window's pretty frosted. It's hard to see inside. Alright, so there's nothing I can do about the gentleman residing in the fridge at the moment. Nothing I can do about those bones either. Is that what birds look like in this world? Because you can hear birds in the background, right? Gift cards. Delicious time gift cards for frozen goods. 50% off. That doesn't make... Like, so gift cards are typically meant to be a scam, though, aren't they? As in, like, you know, you buy cards, gift cards, to make it so that they can only spend their money at a certain place. Making it 50% off just means you double the money if it's spent at this specific place, which is how it should work. I'm confused by the economic implications of this tiny little square. A coffee maker. Ah, this is where the cheapest possible takeaway coffee is made. You're standing on sacred, coarsely ground. Ah, that's good. As in the bean, the coffee beans are coarsely ground. Sweets, Saturns and Snackums made by Snacky Bay Sweeties. These are these are the sweets that would have gotten me through college. Mostly travel magazines, a few of that hobby train sets, and snacks, assorted snacks and assorted packs. The store is called Snacky Mart after all. I suppose so. How do you get a name like Snacky Bay though? And goods. The usual essentials. Soups, canned foods, and the post-apocalyptic survival kits. I wish more shop shops sold them. They're so convenient. I want gum and a fishing hook all in the same convenient place. An ATM. You can withdraw money here if you had any. I mean, this guy's a senior sale rep. I don't think he's he's doing too poorly. Alright, let's have a chat with you, Martin. Ah, uh, Martin the Marlin. Ah, clever. You've been here before, and you know Mart you know him from way back even. He's been in retail for ages, and he's never been particularly stoked about it. Oh, poor Martin. He's got his little phone on. That's neat. The Marlin Clerk. Yeah, I knew he was a Marlin because his name is Martin. That's wordplay, you see? Uh, the Marlin Clerk exerts a faint smile from behind the counter. Welcome to Snacky Mart. We sell stuff. Oh, hey, man. What's up? His expression relaxes, and he goes back to alternating between daydreaming and tapping on his phone. Slow day, huh? Want to buy something? There's nothing in the fridge. Yeah, Martin, I'm sorry to say, there's nothing in the fridge. I think there's a bunch of stuff in the fridges, actually. <laughs> Don't! <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. The stock... In stock... Ugh. I'm telling you, dude, I stock those fridges. There's stuff in there. I don't know why I get so bad whenever I'm just reading this game. I, I don't know what it is. I I'm jumping ahead, and I'm reading stuff, and it's like... Guys, I promise I can read. I'm not I'm not a literate. Doubt. Ugh. I'm telling you, dude... I stock those fridges. There's stuff in there. There is? Yeah. Wait, those are quest? What? Milk, soda, drinks, and some food. And a dude. Oh, and a dude! There's a dude in the fridge? I, I didn't notice at all. Yeah, there's a dude in the fridge. He scratches his head. I'm surprised you didn't notice. I saw you staring right at him. Everything I know is a lie. I'm gonna go investigate. See, Martin. Everything you know is a lie. This is true, Clement. I'm pretty sure you knew more than the contents of the fridge, or lack thereof. Go check it out for yourself. I'm gonna go investigate and see more. Alright, so now we know there's in fact a man on this bridge. One that we simply didn't see earlier. He's got a bunch of packages with him. What? Window's pretty frosted. It's hard to see inside. I heard there is something in the fridge. Ah, you heard. Yeah, couldn't fool me. Drop the axe, spilled beans. Ah, oh, alright, the jig's up. You got me. You're such an observant investigator. <sighs> Drop the axe, spill the beans. There is a person in the fridge. 
Why does he like an octopusy dude with a beard? Hey, I can see you. Cold enough for you? Ha, <laughs> just kidding. I'm a comedian, you see. Yeah, let's bust out some classic, um... Oh, Mr. Freeze lines. Luther, you hear something being shuffled around under the pause. Actually, no. It should be about three degrees colder. Gotta get Martin to turn the temperature down again. He turns back to his work, whatever it is. I'm Luther. Can I help you with something? What you doing in there? Be honest, did Martin trap you in the fridge? I don't know what to do. I have things on a list that I need to do, and I don't know what to do. What do I do? <laughs> yes. I couldn't say. You do sound like you need help. Not sure what I could do about it. What can you do, other than sit in the fridge and be like, this freezer is too warm? I'm so confused about your job. I'm a journalist. I do journalism. What is that you're holding? What is that you're holding? What are you doing? I'm so confused. Is that a book? No. What? Whatever. I report the news, mostly. Well, I say news, but oftentimes it's just filler. No, I don't mind admitting that. Filler makes the world go round. I'm sure you agree. Filler makes the world iller. Filler makes the world chiller. Improv high. If the filler is the killer, it's certainly thriller, but otherwise certainly not. self awareness no. Say nothing. Fuck rhymes. <laughs> Uh, improv high. If the filler is thriller, it's no longer filler. If a filler is killer, it becomes a top biller. Wow, clam man, give up this comedy thing. You should work, go straight into rap. Improv 71. Outrhyme this fool. Oh, that was Luther. Oh, I'm a, I'm a muppet. I didn't even do the voice. Roll a 36 out on this area 29. Right. Biller, killer, thriller, filler, tiller, griller, miller, piller. If the filler is killer, then the top biller doesn't have to be such a thriller. The filler is a pillar, so the top biller can be chiller. Clam man, dropping sick rhymes. Luther. Hmm. All right, fair enough. So, was there something you needed, or can I get back to work here? How's life in the fridge? Journalist, you say I might have a scoop for you. Oh, is it ice cream? No, probably not. What's what? A, how about exclusive rights to the hottest story this side of Snacky Bay? No, I, I can't. Oh, he's a journalist. This was my job the entire time. Yes, exclusive rights. Weird phrasing, considering you're talking to a man in the fridge. But sure, go ahead. What's the story? I'm opening a comedy club in Snacky Bay. My friends are opening up a comedy club here in Snacky Bay. There's a new club in town, opened by no one in particular. No. I mean, Clamman was a hero. I'm opening a comedy club. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Or my friends. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're opening for them, but you're not opening the club. Yeah, my friends are open. For the first time, Luther's typing stops. Typing. All right. Um, his gaze becomes more attentive. Huh. That actually does sound like news. He looks down at the time in the backup queue. I have five minutes right now quick interview, you and me. Can we do this later? I'm not really prepared. Okay, sure, let's do it. Yeah, why not? Let's jump right in. I've also kind of forgotten the voice of people in Luther at this point. I just know it was deep. <clears throat> Great. I'm not even sure if that picks up on the mic, actually. Great. Luther pulls out a small portable recorder and presses it up against the glass door. First of all, what is your name? Uh, Jacques Gusto. Uh, Clam Man. No, what's your real name? No, it's actually Clam Man. I know, I hate my parents too. Oh, I'm sorry. I would be too. So, m Mr. Man, what do you do? Oh god, what do I do? Self-awareness neurotic. What do I do? I'm a senior sales representative at Snacky Bay Prime Mayonnaise. I'm a comedian. You know what, Clam Man? You are a comedian. Embrace this new side of your life. I'm a comedian. Really? Alright, if you say so. I suppose that makes sense considering what you're plugging. So, a comedy club. Why? Snacky Bay doesn't have a comedy club. Supply and demand. Because there's always room for culture. Laughter's the best medicine. Just for fun. Get it? Ha ha! I'm a comedian. Good one, clan man. Knock it out of the park. Start strong. Start strong. <laughs> best foot forward. Um, there's always room for culture. Laughter is the best medicine. He types away. Laughter cultures, cliches. Got it. 
And are you the owner of the club? Oh no, it's run by three of my friends. No, it's run by a group of comedians. Um, saying it's run by a group of comedians probably will score better. Run by the community. Not worried this might end up being an exclusive ordeal. Comedy's for everyone. I'm not worried. If you don't think jokes are funny, you can leave. As easy as that. I think the shows and performers will vary. There'll be something for everyone. This is true. There will be something for everyone. Hmm. Compromise Club. Might be a good title. Oh, journalists. Well, this journalist in particular, I suppose. Alright. That's about it. Anything you want to add? Uh... It's called the Poseidon, by the way. I should have said that earlier. Yes, please, for the love of God, mention the name. We need customers to come to our opening night. Oh, jeez. Uh... Opening night. Uh... Oh, well, a good opening is important, but also people knowing that it exists and has a name is, is important, too. Don't worry, most of our readers won't really care, and those who do will look it up online. You've got a website, right? I have no idea. Not enthusiastically. Shake your head aggressively. I don't know. I do not know. Maybe I should have prepared for this interview a bit better. That bodes well, doesn't it? Luther hits the keys one final time and looks back up at you. Alright, I'll run this past my editor, and it'll be up either tonight or tomorrow. You wrote the whole thing already? It's not a two-page spread, man. It's a notice about an opening. I could literally write this with my eyes closed. Fine. That's all you need? Okay, thanks. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. He nods. Yep. Now if you don't mind, I've got some work I need to get back to. Luther reclines into the fridge, his face dimly lit by the blue screen of his laptop. Ah, it's a laptop! Right. Is that a typewriter, then? Maybe. No, obviously not. If he's got a laptop, why do you need a typewriter? What a dick. I like him. But why is he in a fridge? Does it matter? Come on, let's go. Alright. Fair enough. What about Martin? What does he have to say? Oh, hey man. What's up? His expression relaxes and he goes back to alternating between daydreaming and tapping on his phone. You're cool with Luther hanging out in the fridge. He's not bothering anyone. And if he's in there, I have an excuse not to stack and stock that particular fridge. It's a win-win for everyone. Yeah, fair enough. I want to buy something. He gives you a blank stare. Usually people grab things and bring them here to pay. But you do you, man. What do you need? What do you have? This is a stupid question. I just realized I don't need anything. Sorry, my brain short circuit. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'll let you get back to work. See ya. Later, dude. Oh, God, I am really hoping Luther's voice picked up on the mic there, because sometimes when I when I do voices that low, it gets quieter, and it doesn't it doesn't translate well, so that's a problem for future Will. Either way, I, I took the text fairly slowly, so you should be able to interpolate what was going on. I, I, I'm not a professional at this. Alright, next stop is the apartment, which we know is here. Enter apartment. Oh, hello, Linda. You're a shrimp, are you? Linda is bouncing with joy in such short intervals, she might be as well be vibrating. Close to her chest, she clutches a notepad tight enough to cre crease the cardboard cover. Over here! Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Realizing how loud she's being, she lowers her voice and leans in. Listen, I've got it. I've got the single greatest realist theory ever. I love this voice. It's safe to say you've never seen her this excited for anything ever before. Should I be seated for this? I'm glad you're not overselling it. Could have ruined the wow factor. I'm not ready to have my... She ponders her question very seriously. Her eyes darting around the room to find a chair, capable of receiving a blow of infinite realness. Might be a good idea. No, wait, it can't be. I'm not going to do her voice, because, like, it would do a disservice to the good voice acting already. Uh, no, no... It can't wait. Put on seat or not, you need to hear this straight away. Alright, let's hear it. An elated screech barely makes its way through her clenched teeth. She's trying to keep her cool, but the vibrations have now reached a frequency where her hair is starting to curl. If she could actually physically explode, this would be the moment. Okay, okay. So... She closes her eyes, retaining composure. 
opens them up and looks at you with the conviction of a globally renowned scientist who is evidently, completely, totally convinced about something. You know how everyone is really awkward. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. No one has ever quantified awkwardness. No one has ever created a scale for being socially inept. Until now, I present to you. Ah, I love this. Smile. No, smile. Oh, fuck, do you mean you've actually... <laughs> patiently Be wait. mistaken, Metro Exit Scale! Mistaken Metro Exit Scale. I do not understand the name. She's hearing applause and elation, a deafening symphony of cheer and rejoice. This is her peaking. She'd probably like it if you sounded as excited as her. Come up with... Of course, it's the great equalizer of awkwardness. The Metro. Oh, it's like when someone tries to go up the wrong escalator or something? Take a step away, tilt your head back, and scream as loud as you can. <laughs> Let Linda know you're as excited as her. Um, come up with a more clever name than that, though. Improv 71. Can we do it? Yes. Why not the subway slip system? Get some alliteration up there. No, I actually like I actually like the first one better. Why did I do this? Slightly surprised. Linda considered your suggestion. That's not bad, actually. Let's put a pin in that. All right, all right. Let me give you the details. Basically, there are five levels on the scale, one to five. Zero doesn't count because no one is zero awkward. Fair. These five levels are determined by how any subject will act in a certain situation, which I'll get into in a second. First, I'm going to give you some parameters. A metro station has two exits, exit A and exit B. In this evaluation, the subject's preferred exit is exit A, since it's closer to where they're going. Exits A and B are on opposite ends of the platform. Do you follow so far? Yeah, absolutely. If I, I'm not going to draw a picture for you guys, but hopefully you can like imagine this too. There's a lot of train terminology can read that. I think so. The station has two exits, and you want to to go to exit A. Exit B is on the other end of the platform. Great! She adjusts her stance as if to seem more scientific and knowledgeable. Now, to place someone on the scale, we have to imagine the situation. Picture this. You get off at the station. You manage to cover a little bit of distance in one direction, believing you're heading for exit A, when you suddenly realize you're going the wrong way. What do you do? I just turn around no biggie. Oh man, it's embarrassing. I guess I'll just turn around. Maybe make some kind of gesture or face to acknowledge it in case someone is watching. Break into a cold sweat. Oh crap, just keep going. It's too late to turn around now. I might have, I've committed. Someone might notice. Yeah, just turn around, no biggie. Huh. Wouldn't have expected you to end up on level one of the scale, but there you go, I guess. It's science, so it's pretty much infallible. And there you go. We've successfully quantified awkwardness in a way everyone can understand. Linda. Apparently you're a world-renowned scientist, and I understand this is just the start of what I imagine is going to be a lot of headaches for postdoctoral researchers. But like, it's not as watertight as you might like to believe. What kind of scientist are you anyway? Um, got some questions at your scale. What are you planning to do with this revolutionary breakthrough? That's it. What are you so excited about? Great. Now about that name. No, no, it's not sharper. I got some questions. What's a level one on the MMES? A level one just turns around and hits for exit A points a finger at you, emphasizing her falling point. However, that doesn't mean they're not embarrassed. The MMES takes physical action into account, but, doesn't mean, but just because someone is a level 1 doesn't mean they won't think about their mistake for the rest of the day. The level 1 will try to get out of the station as fast as possible, but won't do anything out of the ordinary to acknowledge them messing up. Level 2. The focal difference between level 1 and level 2 is that the latter responds by signaling their self-awareness. They'll visibly roll, roll their eyes, throw their head back, or in some other manner show their frustration and acknowledgement of the situation. Level 2 knows it's being watched, always, so it needs to show that it may have made a mistake, but is intelligent enough to be aware of it. A level 2 or higher also can't think of anything else that, than that mistake on their way out of the station. Level 3. This is where things get interesting. A level 3 cannot live with their mistake, so they'll make an effort to exteriorize. She grabs her phone, pointing to it. This is the most common scapegoat. A level 3 could pick up their phone and pretend to read a message or answer a call. They'll then make believe that they just got told to go somewhere else other than their original destination. Keep listening. Lifting the phone to her ear, she continues. Hi, really? I was on my way to A, but oh, okay, I guess I'll go to B instead. Thanks. She puts her phone away, raising an eyebrow. It's, no, it's now no longer my fault. I'm turning. 
I'm not just being awkward. Circumstances just changed. Bonus points if you roll your eyes or sigh loudly while putting the phone away. By the way, I'm sorry for just adding words in to like make the, the reading easier on my part. Um, this is what the level 3 is all about, making excuses. It doesn't have to be the f a phone either. It could be anything. Level 3 is a kind of person in a class or workplace that makes sure everyone knows why they messed up or didn't perform well enough. They need people to believe they're not responsible. Ooh. That's rough. Level 4 has got to be pretty awkward then, right? Oh, level 4 is very awkward. Level 4s get tunnel vision. They can only think about their mistake and how embarrassed they are. So they lose the ability to make rational decisions. They break out into a cold sweat. They start frenetically... Yeah. Yeah, I did read that right. I, I, frenetically is a... I just haven't seen that word in a while. Looking around for people who might be watching. Keep listening. The level 4 just keeps walking. They use exit B. It doesn't matter if they, they're adding 30 minutes to their trip. They're completely unable to... Uh, of turning around. They've committed. It's not that level 4 is proud or more decisive. Level 4 is handicapped by their awkwardness. They're so awkward they can't think straight. What about max awkwardness? Number 5. Okay, so a level 5 on on the MMS, MMES is a serious thing. They're also very rare, but do exist. Level 5 is so awkward that it stops working. Ah, someone just stands there, unable to move. What happens scientifically when a level 5 triggers an awkward event is somewhat unclear, but my study suggests that every single synapse in their brain fires off at once, effectively short-circuiting them. Oh boy. The level 4 acts irrationally, but does so based on its mistake. It continues on its unfortunate trajectory. The level 5 becomes completely illogical. We're talking about running in circles, screaming, crying, breaking down, melting into a puddle on the platform, eventually the shutdown of all motor functions. Is there anything higher than a 5? If there is, I've never seen it. Technically, it's possible that someone is so awkward that they start to affect and even bend gravity. They'll literally sink into the ground. She considers her previous statement, frowning. Level 5 is a danger to itself, but anything above would, I suppose, be a threat to everything in the world around it. And everyone around it. Determine whether or not this applies to you. Are you saying that someone could be so socially uncomfortable and awkward that it could create a tear in time and space? This person's evidently not a physicist. Um... Determine whether or not this applies to you. Nailed it. Wait. I rolled a 52 out of a necessary... I succeeded somehow. Um, this is big. You have superpowers now. Everyone will tremble in fear. Then again, so will you, because you're literally superhumanly awkward. <laughs> wait, is she looking at you? She knows. She knows. No, wait. She's looking at your pants. Is there a stain? There must be. There must be the wrong color. Maybe a color that was recently tied to something super bad. Oh yeah, clamming up here representing gang colors. Oh boy, oh boy, this is bad. This is really bad. You're in trouble now. You go, you're going down. They're gonna lock you away unless unless you create a tear in time and space right now. <laughs> yes, that's the only way you can escape. Sure, I open up a tear in space time and escape. Can I save? Can I save? I I would not put it past Clam Man to accidentally rip a hole in space time. Ah, why not? Let's make this playthrough interesting. Really? Okay. Well, sure. Yeah, you can try. Aqua Dynamics. 4%. Do it. Oh, thank goodness. You rolled a 52 out of necessary what? You didn't think this would actually work, did you? You try concentrating, focusing, and after standing around for a minute, looking like you're about to crap yourself, you reassess the situation for both you, your, and Linda's sake. This was awkward for both of you. Uh, okay. You still there? Fucking, it's Clamman's blank-ass expression that does it for me. It's just like, you can project so much comedy onto that. It's wonderful. Uh, that's what you're so excited about. Yeah. What were you planning on doing with this? I have to prove it. That's how science works. You can have all the theories you want, but they're not worth a thing unless you can reproduce them. Prove them. How are you going to do that? So you're going to test it out? Group test surveys? What's your plan? Uh, I'm not going to do anything, probably. She seems pensive, overlooking her notes. It's just for fun. There's not an actual scientific need for the MMES. This is true. There's not. I honestly don't have the time to do any of that field research anyway. Eh. Doesn't matter. Here's an idea. Do it all online. Pull surveys. Easy. If you can handle the paperwork and all that stuff, I can take care of the field research. Just do it online. I could, I guess. Hmm. It would take a lot of time, though. And I'm not sure if the scientific community would accept the results. I guess I could try. The thing, about, the thing about the scientific community is, if your evidence is strong enough, they'll accept the results. 
You just need to actually have, like, evidence. That's gonna take a while. You could help to speed things up. Or not. It's up to you. This way, you don't have to promise anything. Oh, do I want to do field research? Probably. I don't know. There's just, this feels like... Uh, this feels like the kind of quest I don't want to do. Popping around at doing surveys for people. Hmm. Ah, uh, jeez. Okay, I might as well... I'll t look, I'll take the quest. Uh, we'll see if we do it. You know what? Earlier when I told you how happy it was... That, you know what? Earlier when I told you she was excited and happy, it pales in comparison to what's happening now. Are you serious? Really? Yes, I'd love that. Oh, cool. So you have... Yeah, as I said, I, I don't know when I said this earlier, but I knew this would cause a lot of stress for, you know, postdoctoral researchers. I didn't realize Clan Man was getting roped in as a, as a researcher as well. Let's do this. Uh, what do you need to test your theory? Can we talk about the fundamentals of MMES again? I'm at my progress with the research. What do, you, what do you need? I need data, I suppose. There's determination and pragmatism in her voice, and she continues. We don't have the time or resources to test this on a thousand people, which is kind of like what you'd want to do. I think the best course of action is to find a true level 1, a true level 5, or 6, I guess. We document the responses and use that data to gain more traction. She studies you, but I don't think we can use ourselves for the study. It doesn't seem very scientific. This is fair. Then, with more traction, we have the attention and potential funding to actually pursue the theory in a greater scope. You know what? I'll give you credit. You've got a, a decent head on your shoulders. And as long as you do understand, like, you know, this is just for fun at the moment, then, I, then it's fine. Scientists are allowed to have a little bit of projects. Got it. I need to find someone not awkward at all, and someone who is incredibly awkward. Interview them and bring the data back. Ooh, actually, was it Dev or Dez? The guy in the mailbox? He'd be... He's... He seems pretty fucking awkward to me. Let's, let's see if we can get him. Uh, Alright, I'll be on my way. Good luck. But we will get back to that after we... Oh, Lynn's apartment. No need to knock, she's already in the stairwell. That makes loads of sense. I just walked into her apartment, that'd be weird. Ha, uh, major look. You've bested me, game. Electric box. It reads danger, danger, high voltage. There's more, but the rest has been scrubbed out. When we touch, when we kiss. I've heard a reference to that song in ages. Um, okay. Oh, lovely. There's a little triangle here where Clan Man can, like, transition between the different square elements of his room. This is a nice apartment, actually. Nice little eating area. That's a nice TV. It's a chill area. Put your feet up if you want to. Do a little dusting. Oh, it's a little rug. Not in the mood to go... Not in the mood to set the bed or go to sleep right now. So I, I just can't go in the bedroom at all. That's fair enough. Clock. It's a nice clock. Just a shame it doesn't work. Maybe you should give it a hand sometime. Boodumts. Video game. Oh, he's a... Is that a PS4 or an Xbox? Maybe it was designed so they wouldn't be able to tell. A few games and the Nintendo Clutch. <laughs> I couldn't have been more wrong. Um, miniature sandbags. Some artisan miniature sandbags. Nothing more than overpriced tiny rock cloth containers. Yeah, that checks out. I got a Rubik's Cube. Oop. House plant? Why is this getting a... Okay. Tiny, green, seaweedy tendrils hang over the sides of the pot. This plant's been neglected. Suddenly, a few of them shift and move, and the plant speaks up with a gruff voice. Yeah, what? What are you so upset about? You're a plant to buy. <laughs> in fairness, you're a clam, so like, kind of, almost on the same level. Oh, I wonder. I wonder why I'm so upset. Are you hungry? I know that's what when I get cranky. Of course I'm cranky. I'm stuck here in this godforsaken pot in this godforsaken apartment. That sounds like cranky talk to me. I'll get you something to eat. Hurry, I'm starving here. About that food. Still don't have anything for you. Where could I find some? The houseplant gives you the most disappointed, disillusioned look you've ever gotten from a houseplant. Oh god, I can't even imagine. Uh, yeah, no. I wouldn't know. I don't know where they store food in a house. I think he means the fridge. Smug. You swing the door open, the light clicks, and the contents of the fridge is illuminated by what seems like a spotlight. There's food in here. Amazing. What would a house plant want to eat? What are you offering, fridge? I'm not ready to unfridge anything yet. I'll come back later. Ooh. What would a houseplant want to eat? 
Our spine does nothing all day, every day. It just sits there contributing nothing. You'd think with that logic, you would know not to ask her much. I just wanted to give it a choice. Well, maybe start by having a look at what's in here. Then you can ponder what is and what isn't suited to the palate of a plant. Shouldn't it just be eating light, dude? Ah, uh, bread, milk, cold cuts. I don't know. Like, out of all of this, I mean, I suppose bread, if like the plant was, oh jeez, I'm trying to apply logic to this. Yeah, I'll take the bread. Not so fast, Boku. It's unclear where or whom the voice is coming from. Don't talk back to me, bread. The speaker is clear now. The slice of bread in the front of the bag. And it continues. I ain't only talking back to you, kid. I'm telling you to back off. You ain't touching me. You ain't touching none of us. Us? Bread. The union. The coalition of loaves. Oh, Jesus. Um, the slice of bread stands proud as it continues. Whole meal. R white. Rye. We stand united. Unity is to suffer the oppression of the fridge. The fridge is oppressing you? Of course it is. Feel it in the air. The cold chill of conservation. Domination. The stillness of submission. Bread is n isn't meant to exist in this climate. It's not right. So you're, say you're saying you guys are unhappy being fridged. The foremost slice nods. We need freedom. A life short and col colorful. Glorious and grand. And death shall have no dominion. Alright, cool. I put, personally, personally, this is just me. Oops. This is just me. I put bread in the fridge to keep it long. But yeah, it's not really meant to be in there. You really are intense. Can I help some men out? Yeah, I'll help my bread. I'll take it out and put it on the counter. The foremost slice stops and convenes with the rest of the loaf. The moan passes until it speaks again. An assembly is at hand. A gathering of the factions to discuss the fate of the fridge. If you will, a mediator is needed. If you accept that task, we ask of you to give us your support when the time is nigh. Fine, I'll mediate the meeting. We place our trust in you, for your sake. It best be, wise, uh, best be a wise decision. Are you ready to begin the meeting? I wanted to feed my plant for some reason that needs food from the fridge. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm finding myself frustrated for some reason. This is all just meant to be, like, in good humor. Um. Yeah, why not? Let's do this. I suppose this is, this is the big encounter in the uh, the apartment setting. I concur. Let's go. There's much to discuss. Oh, boy. Alright, this is it. Your debut as a mediator. Do you feel prepared? The air is crisp and cold, as it usually is in the fridge when the factions assemble. It's tense and uncomfortably silent. Self-awareness average. I'll... As prepared as I'll ever be. We can give up, you know. We can just go. Just grab something to eat and leave. Never come back. We've come too far already. Alright. Let's do this. The factions gather in a half circle, divided into three groups. The Coalition of Loaves, the Anarchist Cold Cuts, and the Tomato Communities. Speakers have been elected to represent each, and they've gathered at the very front. Okay, I'm liking this now, now that we're getting into like the proper democratic debate and grandstanding the dem democracy of dairy isn't here none of none have come and as you spy them on the door shelf none show any intent to the foremost slice lifts her fist patting it against his chest their freedom depends on you and the coalition knows it peoples of the fridge we are gathered here today to discuss the fate of this land start singing a beautiful song yeah why not what starts off as a hum grows in confidence, and soon the factions of the fridge are still for a moment listening to your melody. Huh, that went better than I expected. Fridge. Yeah, there's a few confused faces in the crowds, but most seem to have appreciated your little song. Except the smokiest meats, it wasn't heavy enough for them. Try growling next time. Everyone's a critic. Peoples of the fridge, we are gathered here today to discuss the fate of this land. Looks are exchanged. Some nod. From the back, a particularly loud dinner roll shouts, We know! They know. Get on with it. Alright, let's get started. Who wants to go first? The one, f the foremost slice steps forward. I represent the Coalition of Loaves, and we would like to make our case. This place, this fridge, the foremost slice clears its, its throat. It is a torture chamber. It is a prison of death, and it must not contain us any longer. For the greater good, we propose to hurl ourselves towards the door the gateway to the great beyond to open it once and for all. Only then can our people truly live. 
And, as it happens, our speaker, outsider as he may be, is sympathetic to our suffering. You said once for all, there's no way you can just close it after you've left. What if I take you out of the fridge and close the door after you? It is not that simple. Our exodus will be joyous, but short-lived. Knowing the fate that once befell us will befall our children and successors. No, the oppression of the fridge must be ended once and for all. Oh, okay, so you're like, okay, just, just promise to keep all the bread in the counter. The elder tomato speaks up. Opening the fridge will be the end of us all. You're sentencing us to a slow death if you open that door. Bread. A death, perhaps, but a true life until then. None of this agony, this submission. Order, one at a time. The foremost slice nods at you, and then lets its eyes wander over the crowd. Can you truly stand idly by and let my people suffer? I ask you nothing more than this. Returning to the rest of the loaf, the coalition has spoken. The next speaker may take the stand. I am to be a mediator. The elder tomato, resting heavy on his cane, makes his way to the stand. My friends, he begins, we all share the same world, and this is the world as we know it. It may be cold, it may at times be dark, but it is the world we were given. It is not up to us to make these drastic changes. Another day comes, another passes. Cold cuts. You're blind, old man! The Sopraceta shouts. You've been in here too long. You've been blinded by the status quo, and now you mistake it for light at the end of a dark tunnel? Order. The elder tomato flashes you a grateful smile and continues. We, the tomato community, are willing to help the coalition in any way we can. He looks over towards the cold cuts. Your people, too, are friends of the tomatoes, if you will have us. We propose strength and unity among our peoples, but a closed door. Brett, a furious yell makes its way from the back. You're killing us! Whoa, this is getting heated. The Sopraceta steps up and stops in front of the elder tomato. Another scoff. There's almost a tinge of pity this time. We're all for peace, love, and understanding. We won't ally with someone who refuses to see the world as it is. We ain't playing your game anymore, old man. Red. An alarmed voice rips through the back of the loaf. Look, up there! What are they doing? On a distant shelf, you notice what looks like a crack team of smoked ham making its way up the thermostat to the upper shelves. They're planting explosive charges! The foremost slice turns towards the cold cuts. You. What have you done? Tomatoes. Screams of terror, many of them voices of children, rupture the red crowd. The elder tomato mouths, May God have mercy on us all. Cold cuts. The meats realize their plan has been uncovered, but their only response is cheer. This is it, baby! The revolution is here! What the fuck is going on in my fridge? Improv, not terrible. Challenge. Sopper set his authority. Yeah, fuck you, slice of meat. Sure, what do you say? <laughs> now I just wait a diddly darn minute. <laughs> Uh, wait, Cold Cuts, if you truly love peace, understanding music, you'll hear me out. Yeah, of course these guys love music. The Sopraceta maintains its composure, regarding you suspiciously. What do you propose? A guitar duel, you and me. Fuck it, why not? Vicious. Laughter. Laughter. Vicious, mocking laughter. I accept. Have at it, brother. A slice of pastrami hurls you a flying V electric guitar, plugged in, distorted, and ready to go. Improv 31, play the greatest guitar solo of all time. Your fingertips plant themselves confidently on the 12th fret. A quick pick and a bend as you launch into your solo. Play a crescendo of modal scales and fire from three finger tapping, or keep it classy. Nah, dude, blow them out of the park. You are shredding. As you finish up your solo, the cold cuts, along with the rest of the fridge, are in awe. The Sapraceta hasn't even played yet. Uncertainty spreads through the high protein ranks and the cold cuts. The Sopraceta, for the very first time, seems to lose its composures. Brothers, don't let yourself be swayed. This is the man. This is who we're up against. Give it up. It's over. Give it up. It's over. No need to get physical. I've already beaten him at the, at the guitar. Never. I ain't ever going down like this. The revolution never dies. <laughs> Those words, the Sopraceta hurled itself over the edge of the shelf, landing on the ground with a splat. Collect yourself and inspect the sliced meat in the ground. It's already got dirt in it. Old crumbs and dust. Ugh, gross. I'm not serving that. Can I wipe it off? Let's try to save him. No way. 
we're better than that. Fine. The commotion settles as the faction speakers convene in the center of it all. Whoops. Tomatoes. The elder tomato is the first to speak. We are in debt to you, my dear friend. You brought us together. Next is the foremost. Slice. We are grateful, truly. This isn't what I expected to happen when I, when I opened the fridge. The elder tomato smiles. I can imagine. So, how can we repay you? This is kind of awkward to ask now, but I need some food. The other tomato looks worried. If you truly need food, we cannot stop you. We have no authority, physical or moral, to refuse you. From the crowd, a slice of smoked ham approaches. If you allow it, brother, I would like to offer myself. It is the least I can do for my people. I can't accept. You know, you got you got to leave the good you got to leave the good ones in, and, and you know, take the bad ones, the ones that go bad faster. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm I'm thinking about this far too much. I can't accept. You're not responsible for your whole faction. The fridge dwellers grow silent with respect. Out of the kindness of your heart, you've abandoned your quest for food. <laughs> well, see you later, Lucas. Say nothing. Just walk away like a cowboy riding into the sunset. The proverbial sun sets, and you close the fridge. You reflect on the past ten minutes. You left your fridge in a better place than you found it, and that has made all the difference. You have nothing to show for it but your clean conscience. See you, fridge cowboy. End. Alright. I think that's as good a place to end this episode as any, now that we've resolved the highly tense fridge conflict with a sick guitar solo um, and, you know, democracy in action. Uh, we'll, we'll check in on the plant next time, uh, but for now, this, this is all of us, so... This is, this is the episode. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.